located in Lancaster? Yes, I'm in my um, uh, dormitory now. All right. Yes, it's recording. I, I think it's recording right now. Okay, so let's begin. Um, good afternoon, dear Professor Niraj and Professor Yang. And I very appreciate you are my dissertation marker and thank you so much for attending my dissertation viva. My name is Zhipeng Jiang and you can call me Peter if you like. My dissertation title is Cyber Essential Based Security as a Service from Work for Small and Medium Sized Enterprise. I do hope you like my work. So first of all, I declare that all the work in this project is my original work and has not been submitted to any other university or applied for a similar degree. So this is the table of content of my dissertation. The dissertation has been divided into seven chapters. Each chapter begins with a respective introduction to facilitate readers' understanding and the chapter's content. So first of all, chapter one. Chapter one is the introduction of the dissertation, which includes a research background, briefing of the research gaps, uh, objectives, research question, and research significance. This chapter provides our readers with a broad understanding of the dissertation and facilitate the reading of other chapters. So, in order to have an in-depth understanding of this paper, it is important to understand the background of the research. In my reading of the literature, I found that with the progressive use of digitalization, threats and vulnerabilities have increased. So small and medium sized businesses or SMEs are generally defined as a business with less than or equal to 250 employees. SMEs have not mitigated because of their smaller size. Instead, they are also exposed to the cybersecurity incidents. So they are even more exposed to their threats because they do not have sufficient funding and knowledge. Therefore, um, there is a need to create a completely new framework linking cyber essentials and security as a service to reduce their gap. As you can see from this uh, from this figure, the total number of, of threats are gradually upward from 1999 to the present, doubling from the uh, 2017 hours and still increasing gradually at steady rate. This is further illustrated that the seriousness of the threats, especially for small and medium sized businesses. So in addition, the chapter one also includes a briefing to research gap, research objectives, research questions, and this overlaps with content that follows. So they are presented later. An introduction to the content of uh, the chapter of the main body is included at the end of this first chapter. Chapter two, the background information. Chapter three uh, introduces the research methodologies. Chapter four introduces the mapping between cyber essentials and the SCCAS components and the, the design of the framework. Uh, and chapter chapter five, the so four uh, recommended recommended uh, deployment sequence of uh, SMEs are discussed uh, separately. Chapter six uh, discussed the recommendations for SMEs and potential issues for this framework. Chapter seven, it sum, summarizes the main elements of the framework by reviewing the objectives and research questions of the study. In addition, the chapter analyzes overall impact of the framework on cybersecurity in SMEs, uh, recommendations for the future work, and where the framework could be improved. So next is chapter two. This chapter uh, includes a brief overview of the current cybersecurity state in SMEs, as well as the introduction of uh, cyber essentials and SCCAS. Currently, there are four aspects of uh, cyber problem faced by SMEs. Uh, this is reduced version of a PESTEL analyze. It's a management tool to evaluate the business environment. So in this paper, uh, we focus on the financial, technological, social, and compliance. These four areas are presented and discussed in the dissertation. Here are a few statistic numbers that show how SMEs are currently responding to these threats. There are already many established framework and regulations available to a cybersecurity uh, community, such as ISO IEC uh, 27000 series, GDPR uh, 
and so on and so forth. And you can see here the SMEs in the Middle East are only 56% of them that held the cybersecurity awareness. And only 12.45% of SMEs just use endpoint security. And SMEs use firewalls, only 10.2% of them. And uh, most uh, organizations are using the cloud services. And all organizations in the Europe have to comply with the GDPR, right? And if they don't comply with GDPR, they can be fined for about uh, up to uh, 20 million uh, euro or 4% of their annual uh, income. So it's very serious. So the UK government has established a common standard for cybersecurity within the UK, and the organizations want to have a business uh, with the government have to, 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 to comply with the uh, cyber essentials. So cyber essentials is an effective government-backed scheme that will help you to protect your organization whatever is size against the whole range of most common cyber attacks. So it has three main features. It's particularly effective for SMEs and it's UK government backed and raised SMEs awareness. And next is the five technical aspects in cyber essentials. They are firewalls, security configuration, user access control, malware protection, security update management. Next, cyber essentials have three significant advantages. First of all, clumsy uh, security controls may not apply to uh, SMEs, but cyber essentials works well. And previous researchers have uh, proved that the cyber essential mitigating two thirds of uh, remote exploiting threats and one third of uh, uh, other vulnerabilities. For high severity and very high severity vulnerabilities among this, cyber essential is particularly effective. Third, previous uh, researchers argue that the cyber essential can help organizations to meet the GDPR. It also clearly includes understanding of how PII is held. However, cyber essentials have its own drawbacks. First of all, cyber essential focus on the infrastructure rather than the online apps nor uh, cloud services. Second, the cyber essentials tend to be more a description of the end result, and there are no technical guidelines. Third, um, cyber essentials still have long way to go in terms of the popularity. As a complement to cyber essentials, SCCAAS uh, plays an important role. So you can see uh, in this figure, um, SMEs, uh, in the past, SMEs used to buy firewalls, rotors, WAFs in advance before they use them. But when you use the SCCAS SEC, security model, SMEs can just use a pay-per-use or PSUGO model to rent a service from uh, the cloud service provider. As you can see here, SCCAS is a subset of SAAS. Also, uh, SEAS also includes 10 different functions based on the definition given by cloud security aliens, as known as CSA. CSA has provided a detailed guidelines for all these different functions. So there, so the, here are also uh, some advantages on the uh, SCCAS. I have used the, the uh, reduced version of a pesto analyze and based on the financial, technological, social, and compliance. However, no solution is perfect, and SCCAS has its own drawbacks. First of all, is uh, SMEs may use to purchase the physical device rather than run service uh, from this uh, cloud service provider. And the second is the security continuity because if the organization wants to switch from the traditional model to the, uh, to the SCCAS model, there may be the uh, passively, passively wait for the service to be restored, right? And now, by reading the relevant literature and document uh, from uh, 2011 to 2022, this study has defined the number of key issues. First of all, Previous studies have not considered standard and guidelines specific for SMEs. 
Uh, second, the preliminary studies have not considered how to tailor the SECAS according to requirements of SMEs. Third, previous studies have not specified how SMEs can apply this cloud security service in an early stage. So based on the three previous uh, research gaps, this study proposed a, a one a research objective and three research questions. So the re research objective for this paper is to develop a cyber essential based security service framework for SMEs to bridge the gap between them. And the first research question is how can the component of SCCAS to be tailored according to the cyber essential framework? And the second research question, in what order should SME deploy the framework to ensure the maximum uh, positive impact? The last research question is, what are the security recommendations for SMEs? The third chapter is research methodology. And two main research methods are used in this study. First of all, it's the literature analyze. The literature analyze provides a theoretical basis of the study. Therefore, the first research method is uh, to conduct an existing literature review on the uh, current state of the uh, SMEs. And the second is the official document study. You know, uh, the uh, cyber essentials are based on, on the uh, official document provided by NCSC and the SECAS uh, is based on the uh, guidelines provided by CSA. So I think my study has two um, main uh, innovation points. First of all, is uh, specifically focused on SMEs. In this study, the use of uh, cyber instructions to customize uh, SCCAS is discussed and to uh, based on the combination of them. And the second is to provide a guidance for SMEs. And the findings in this study allows SMEs to spend the a modest budget and the most needed to achieve the highest ROI. This is also provide adaptable and flexible solution for SMEs. Chapter four. This is a main part of the dissertation. This chapter responds to RQ1, research question one, and builds a new adaptive framework based on the theoretical analysis. So as you can see from this figure, this framework is based on the example on SMEs that does not have a, a proper security, as you can see here. According to the structure on this framework, the deployment process of the framework is as follows. And uh, as SME without proper uh, security should complete a self-check according to the uh, separate essentials. And this one of the uh, requirements for deploying this uh, framework. Second, the SMEs should complete uh, the asset identification and the assessment. It's a step that help SMEs to prioritize the importance of their assets. In this step, SMEs will understand what core asset and how to protect these core assets. Third is the mapping uh, cyber essentials to SCCAS based on this framework. And this allows SMEs to eliminate the components they do not need currently and prioritize the deployment of the components they do need based on the results before. One is the, uh, uh, the, the framework is fully deployed. SMEs can expect the better cyber security. It is important to know that, as you can see here, the SMEs need to regularly assess their uh, asset uh, and identify the latest security uh, changes and asset changes. And last, and as SMEs gradually develop and have more capital, more manpower, and more technology, they may consider to deploy a full featured SCCAS for complete cybersecurity protection. Here are two uh, prerequisites and uh, requirements. First of all, they have to self do self-check according to the uh, cyber essentials. And the second, they have to do the identify and the evaluating uh, assets. In this, in this table, as you can see, each column here uh, is an uh, asset and each row represents an element that uh, affects the decision. 
each sale, as you can see here, is the importance of the impact of the assets. Zero represents no impact marketing white, and one here is a mineral impact marketing green, and two represents the moderate impact marketing yellow, and the three represent the serious uh, impact marketing red. Finally, the overall score of the importance of this asset is required in the last row, and, the, and this is the importance to um, determine this uh, uh, assets is the um, core assets or not. So the overall of the sc score in the red can be considered as a core assets, as you mentioned, as I mentioned, and the need to be prioritized and uh, properly protected. So uh, this is also another important figure in my dissertation. This framework concludes uh, several one-to-one -one and one-to-many mappings between cyber essentials and SCCAS. As shown in figure six, the left-handed rectangle contains the technical controls of uh, cyber essentials, and the right-handed uh, rectangle contains the main functional categories offered by SCCAS. The arrows here um, represent the mapping relationships that existing from the cyber essentials to SCCAS. You may also notice that there is some uh, uh, rectangles in diagram are blank. This means that the fact there's no mapping between the SCCAS and uh, the cyber essentials, but it does not mean that these function categories are not important. Now, chapter five. Chapter five is a priority analyze of the framework deploy sequence. This chapter is to address uh, research question two, and this chapter divides SMEs into financial sensitive, technology sensitive, social impact sensitive, and compliance sensitive, and discuss their sequence of using this framework separately. Um, it is recommended that all SMEs always consider identity and access management at the first phase, as once the permission of the management is disorganized, uh, all the security defense that follows will be irrelevant, right? So uh, for financial sensitive SMEs, so initial deployment of this framework may consider use uh, as many of the free products offered by SCCAAS provider and ensure that protection is effective. Next is uh, technology sensitive SMEs. So if such SMEs do not have the much technical background, they may consider to choose a suitable SEAS provider and outsourcing the uh, related technical issues to them. Uh, for the uh, social uh, impact uh, uh, sensitive SMEs, so email and data have the significant social impact. Therefore, SMEs that are sensitive uh, with uh, social impact must protect email and data first, as you can see here. So for those SMEs, and in order to uh, implementation of this framework, that should co consider the human element first, then the technical element, and finally, the infrastructure protection, as you can see here. Next, compliance sensitive SMEs. So compliance sensitive SMEs must pr prioritize the data protection. So the first four measures are all data specific, as you can see here. And these SMEs mainly deal with sensitive data, such as medical records, uh, payment and information, and PII. And they have a higher requirements of handling the sensitive information and higher compliance requirements than other SMEs. Six, chapter. It the main covers some recommendations and potential limitations, there is also an answer of research question three. So the recommendations are divided into three main objects and nine interests. So there are uh, some uh, recommendations for the UK, uh, SME in the UK, for the SME in the uh, other countries, for SMEs that complete service essentials, for SME managers, they have to always consider the, uh, the framework as a whole and don't trust the 100% of the SCCAS provider, and they have to pay extra attention to the principle of the least privileges and the separation of powers. For the SME employees, 
the training is essential, right? So uh, all employees need to read their relevant security awareness and always apply strict password controls. It's very important. Although this uh, dissertation uh, creates a theoretical uh, framework for SMEs, there are three potential limitations to the framework as follows. First one is the framework can be useful to SMEs in other countries, but they still cannot obtain the cyber essential uh, certificate, and they may not have a, a sufficient uh, support, and it is uh, difficult for SMEs to objectively assess whether they meet all uh, uh, requirements of cyber essentials or not. Second, this study uh, does not discuss the fact that SMEs have uh, other tendencies of concern. So, for example, some enterprises uh, have uh, both financial, financially concerned and technically concerned, or or both technically and compliance sensitive, right? And third, SMEs and ECAS providers should always consider the uh, business in the light of the latest guidance of documents. However, the uh, CSA have not updated for their uh, uh, guidance for over 10 years. And the seventh chapter is the final chapter of this uh, dissertation. It mainly summarizes all the work have done in this article, as well as describing some uh, uh, prospects of uh, research in the future. So here's a review of the research objective and research questions. And um, this uh, and uh, this table mainly reviews research questions and the accomplishment of the study for uh, research question one and uh, has to be addressed uh, was uh, addressed in uh, chapter four. Uh, research question two was addressed in chapter five. Research question three was addressed in chapter six. And this and uh, this study is a powerful tool to bridging the gap between the cyber essentials and the cyber um, SCCAS, which uh, complements of their uh, uh, research literature. And this study also provides a theoretical reference for future research in academics. So first of all, this study highlighted the importance of uh, SCAS for the SMEs. And the second, the study provided a dynamic flexible and adaptable solution for different types of SMEs. Third, this study makes the actionable uh, recommendations for SMEs and their stakeholders. For future work, this study has highlighted many topics in need of future research. research. Researchers should, but not limited to, focus on following areas in the future. Uh, first of all, uh, they may want to use uh, quantitative methods because they use quantitative method. They can they allow more accurate measurements of the benefits and to do some forecast. Second is the mapping uh, with other framework because the cyber essential is a use UK based uh, uh, regulations and researchers may want to uh, combine their own national regulations and their own knowledge to extend this framework. And second, extend this framework in the broader sense. So for example, the researchers can uh, consider to use the uh, Zero Trust, cybersecurity consulting as a service, cybersecurity training as a service, cybersecurity uh, compliance as a service, so on and so forth. Okay, this is the end of my, of my dissertation viva, and perhaps this is the end of my postgraduate life. I really, really had a wonderful experience in Lancaster. And I do hope you have a wonderful listening experience. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate and ask me. Thank you so much for your listening and your supervision. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Very nice presentation. Yeah, so thank you, Peter. So uh, Niraj, do you want to ask questions first? So I had a list of questions and then when Peter kept on presenting and he kept on answering those questions, so it was like scratch that question, scratch that question. OK, that's nice. So, so Peter, go to slide number 23 or figure six. One, uh, figure six. Sorry, this one? one? 28, right. So this is the heart of your thesis to do the mapping. Mm hmm. 
Now, who who checks the compliance that this mapping is actually a correct mapping or an adequate mapping? So you 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 have cyber essentials on one side, you have security as a service, let's say modules on the other side, and you're trying to do a mapping between one and the other. Yes. But the mapping has to be compliant to some guidelines or the other. So who enforces the, the compliance between the linkage between the two is actually a good one. Thank you. OK. So 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 um, I'm sorry, could you please repeat your question, please? Because you know, uh... so your basic premise in your thesis is to find a linkage between cyber cyber essentials and the security as a service to actually as a deployment. So an SME may want to do this kind of mapping to have the bridge between the two, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what is the body that enforces that the bridge is actually a correct mapping from one to the other and is compliant to something? Oh, I understand your question now. And uh, this is a very good question. This is what I did uh, when I do this when, when I do this project. That's because I read uh, different uh, this, the re regulations. Um, uh, just for example, I read the Cyber Essentials document and SCCAS document and the um, ISO IEC 27000 series and the um, uh, guidance provided by NST. And uh, they, they, are, they are just, just focusing on the uh, uh, small and medium sized businesses. I, 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 I detailed re read all of these articles and the articles, if, if uh, just for example, for the for the firewalls and the, as you can see here, it's uh, it's um, uh, just uh, have a mapping between the uh, firewalls and the web security. That's because I read this document and the document mentioned that you have to do this, this, this. So this is the uh, base of I mapping these different components. So, so are you saying that uh, you had uh, support from papers you read? Yes, I, uh, to support I, I have this some, mapping. Uh, yes, I have some uh, uh, support and uh, based on existing uh, this well known mm -hmm. uh, security standard and to do this mapping. So let me let me elaborate. I'm, I'm not sure I fully understood. So supposing I take firewalls, they map to web security, they map to network security. And they they could also potentially map to intrusion let's say tolerance or intrusion detection. So many mappings are possible. Now, when you have a standard, there is a standards body that stamps you and says you are compliant to the standard. So it's legally binding in a certain way. Here, the binding is something that you're proposing as a framework. So what 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 is the basis for someone to say, yes, they were compliant with cyber essentials or not, because this is a framework that you're proposing, it has not been validated by an external body. So if I want to be super, super safe, I can show a one to many binding from the cyber essentials to the security as a service, and I am very comfortable with that. But how do you ensure that you actually have the right mapping and it is compliant to something, something, and I don't know what that something is. So just like I mentioned before, uh, I have some existing regulations. This is the basic of the uh, the uh, this is the basic of this uh, figure. And second, this mapping only shows one possibilities. I uh, I, I do agree that you mentioned that uh, the uh, there are many uh, possible mappings between uh, sub essentials and SCCAS. So this dissertation only uh, shows uh, one possibilities. That I think is uh, is useful and is viable. And uh, third, I I read this uh, this uh, this regulations as a whole a, a, as a whole just uh, just uh, all of the regulations and uh, I think this is the best way to to show the mappings in this figure. I think what you have is something very powerful and I like it. So I'm only trying to understand mm -hmm. that supposing I'm an SME and I want to do this mapping and I want to be compliant. 
So one one is to and since all this compliance has a cost associated with it, one way is to simply show that you are compliant with everything, so you are legally safe from that viewpoint. But from the viewpoint of an expense, that is probably the most expensive way to to be compliant. So is there a third party which would then offer compliance to to this kind of a framework? It's just it's just a curiosity. It's not a criticism at all. Okay. Um. Yeah, when they when the uh, organization in the UK want to get a SEP insurance or certificate, there should be a third party to validate whether their uh, SEP insurance source is deployed properly. They have to be the third parties. But uh, this is one of the limitations in this situation because in other countries, um, the organizations may not have the third parties to validate this uh, the, if, if all of the SEP insurance source is deployed uh, properly or not. So how do you assess the cost for an SME? So this is one of the um, just limitations in the uh, in the uh, in my dissertation because this dissertation only focuses on the uh, you know only focus on the uh, theoretical framework rather than just to, to, to measure it. Yes, if if I if I will be a PhD student in the future, and my research interest will be the uh, SAP Essentials and this ACAS. I do have to do some measurement and calculations, survey, and uh, to 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 see if it's effective or not. Interesting. Yeah. Go ahead, Yang. So, yeah. Any other questions, Niran? No, I, I'm I'm pretty okay with the questions. I mean, I I had a question about the yeah. different type of SMEs that they would that an SME would have more than one role or the other. Mm -hmm. But Peter already answered that in one of his slides. Okay. So this is why I had a list of questions, and I was scratching that question by saying, "Already mm -hmm. clarified, already clarified." So very good. Okay. Yeah, that's that's good. Okay, Peter. So yeah, uh, good uh, presentation. You have uh, fancy slides. I see you use a lot of different uh, features, uh, figures there. So one uh, suggestion you should, uh, especially in the in the slides, you should increase the font the size of the, oh, okay. the version. Yes. Maybe the paper yeah, is fine. Exactly. You more small. Okay. And uh, also in the presentation, you can minimize the. Saying saying of this S E C A S you just say cybersecurity as a service. All right. All right. Okay. So it's the same same similar length. And also, I have a, a general question in terms of this uh, framework. Mm -hmm. So you, it's good. It's, so you, you focus on the assembly essential. This is one standard, and based on that, to design the framework. Right. This is a this is a whole of a thesis. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the future work you can. So you had mentioned the next thing you should have the evaluation phase, exactly. right? If you evaluate, you should uh, assess something and evaluate quantitatively. But now I, I know it's, you do not have these resources from NIVO exactly. or others. And with that, maybe it is possible. Now I see in uh, maybe figure five, you can go to figure five. Where is figure uh, five? Is this yeah, one? this is a this is, yeah, call framework of de deployment you design. It's good yes. you have this, this new design. Uh, seems that this is for uh, SME, SME without security protection. How about an SME with already has some uh, security controls deployed? So it's possible we can, with your evaluation design, it's possible we can have a, an additional loop, closed loop. So you have you, you now you have the input of, of, of this service essential standard. Based on that, you have this framework. And now you also integrate uh, maybe your observations, your experience of this comp company, and you close the loop. You may also be able to revise this uh, this standard part. What is priority? Uh, you can redesign that, but maybe at a much slower time scale. You know, exactly. you do not want to. Yeah, so that is uh, could be an interesting direction if you want to work more on, on this uh, okay. uh, project. So, yes. Yeah, basically, so that's my uh, that's my uh, question. OK, um, yeah, based on your question, it's a very interesting one. I, I never I, 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 I never uh, thought it before. It's very interesting. But uh, as you mentioned, the SME with the security protection, um, it means that 
first of all, this uh, this attention is focused on the small and and uh, uh, medium sized businesses, especially for startups. Startup mm -hmm. business, yeah, they do. Yeah. They, they don't have a security protection. And for uh, when 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 thinking about the uh, uh, SMEs with the uh, security protection, you know, security protection have the like, different aspects. There, yeah. there, there is a subject of the uh, cybersecurity. It's a very big subject, and everything that you mentioned can be a uh, security protection, right? Yeah. For example, for web security, they may deploy the WAF. They may have to mitigate the SQL injection. They may have to do some uh, the penetration testing for the web, for the web security. And this is the get guideline of the people how to do this, this, and this. And yeah. and I don't think every SMEs can think can do a perfect solution. Of their protection, I I, I do yeah. don't believe this because every SMEs do have their drawbacks. They don't have money, they don't have manpower, they don't have knowledge. If they can pro properly protect the web security, there may be some problem in network security. If they have a both uh, web security and the network security, they may have training issue. So, this is uh, our overall guidelines for. Uh, for the SMEs to to look at look at themselves what they what they can do better, but I do agree with you that you mentioned that uh, SMEs with the security protection can have another look. It's a very very good idea. Sure. Um, okay. So let me see. Um, right. Yeah. No questions from me. Is basically. Um, we don't have any any further questions. So I'm good. Okay, so good. I think the next step would be would like to Peter would like to ask you to to leave for now. Uh, okay. Leave just and Nia and I will discuss. We'll have a richer agreement on the mark, and you will be noticed by I think the PG office uh, late. All right. Okay. What are your plans okay. after your masters? Sorry. What are your plans after your masters? Um, get a job maybe, and uh, if it's not uh, satisfied, I want to be a PhD student maybe <laughs> to further uh, to 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 do some research on the SCCAS because I think it is a new trend for small and uh, small and medium-sized businesses because they need they do need to have some help uh, from others from other companies. I think this is um better trend, I think. Good. All right. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Niraj, and thank you so much, uh, Professor Yang. And I hope you have a, a wonderful listening experience. And yeah. maybe maybe this is the <laughs> end of my postgraduate life. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. Yeah, yeah. keep in touch later, Peter. I will talk okay. to you later. Maybe. Yeah, okay. thank you. Keep in touch, Niraj. Keep in touch, Yang. Yeah. Okay, I will leave now. Okay. Thank you very much.